guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a little bit of a different video and talk a little bit about etiquette in ballet class. So I feel like in all types of ballet class there are just certain things that people who go regularly kind of know and new people don't know, but I feel that that's especially true of ballet. There are quite a few, I don't want to say rules, but I guess good etiquette for ballet class and so I want to share those with you now and I hope that they'll be really helpful if you're new and if you are already going to adult ballet classes then it might just be a good reminder. So the first thing to consider is where you stand at the bar and if it's your first time in this class, if it's like a dropping class or if it's your first class, I would suggest putting yourself somewhere around the middle. So I wouldn't go right to the front uh, because you might be taking someone's kind of regular space or one of the more kind of confident advanced dancers. And I also wouldn't put yourself right at the back because remember that you always turn around and do the other side. So it means that you're not gonna have anyone to kind of look at as a reference when you turn around to do the other side. So if it's your first class, I would say put yourself somewhere in the middle. Now, if it's your regular class, then you'll probably have your spaces in class because as humans, we're kind of creatures of habit. So we usually go back to the same place at the bar. However, what I would say is that it's always good to view yourself front on sometimes, but also if you have a bar that runs parallel to the mirror, it's also really good to sometimes view yourself from the side, especially for things like turnout so you can check different aspects of your technique. So that's just something to consider about the bar. This might sound really, really obvious, but if you're going into a ballet class and quite often you'll take your things in with you, please make sure that your phone is on silent, not on vibrate, but on just completely silent. I think that's just kind of obvious, but I thought I'd just mention it just in case. <laughs> okay, this again is quite obvious, but it is really important that when the teacher is marking the exercise, you really should listen because I think it's pretty disrespectful um, if the teacher is marking an exercise and people are talking. That's not that common, however I have seen it. However, more common is if the teacher is giving someone a correction and other people are talking because they think the correction is not for them. Whenever the teacher is giving a correction, you should be listening because chances are it will probably apply to you as well. For example, even when I go to beginners classes, and obviously I'm not a beginner anymore, but I still listen to every single correction that the teacher gives because they're just things that I can remind myself of. Like if the teacher's saying, you know, turn your turn your leg out in this day, then I can be thinking about that as well, even though I kind of know that I have to do that. But it's always good to listen to all the corrections and apply them to yourself. So Basically, just any time the teacher is talking, whether it's giving an exercise or correcting, you should be listening and paying attention. So when you come to the centre, it's really important to stagger yourselves. So make sure that you're not standing either directly behind someone or directly in front of someone. Make sure that there's some kind of staggering happening between the lines because everybody wants to be able to correct themselves in the mirror. And obviously just give yourself enough space with the people around you. Make sure you're not too close to the person in front or behind um, and the same to the side. Just make sure that you're spatially aware. I think spatial awareness is the thing that probably is most annoying in ballet class when people don't think about it or aren't paying attention to it. So kind of related to that is when you're doing exercises from the corner um, or on the diagonal. So in this case, usually you're gonna go in much, much smaller groups. So say for example, there are three of you. So again, you would stagger yourself in a kind of triangle formation so that everyone can see themselves in the mirror. And then when you do the combination, make sure that you're not all heading for the opposite corner of the room. Because what happens is if, for example, there are two people here and they're both doing the combination. If they're both heading towards the corner, this is gonna happen and they're gonna crash at some point. So make sure that you are on your own line. So if you are starting not from one corner, if you're starting slightly in front or slightly behind the corner, that's gonna mean that you're not heading for the corner. If you're starting from the back, you're gonna be heading to this wall. And if you're starting from here, you're gonna be heading slightly to the front wall. So please take that into consideration. It's really important when we do diagonals Quite a lot of people just think, just head to the opposite corner, but no, you really need to keep the lines parallel to each other with the other people who are doing the exercise. Another thing that is really important, and I think this is probably the biggest like no-no for newcomers in an adult ballet class, and that is how you leave the dance space after you finish doing the exercise. So quite often in ballet, you'll know that 
you don't just all do an exercise together and then the music stops and then you do another exercise. Quite often it will be one group does the exercise and another group is going to come in straight after and start the same exercise. So it's really important that you know how to leave the dance space. So the general rule is that you always go kind of forward and then to the nearest side. So for example, if you're doing a diagonal to this side, then you're going to leave kind of front and to that side. If it's coming from this way, then this way. Um, and if you're doing something in lines like this, for example, like a Petit Allegro, then you're going to leave, again, you finish the exercise and you're going to leave front and these people are going to go this way and these people are going to go that way. That leaves the space clear for the people who are coming in from the back. What you must never, ever, ever, ever do in an adult ballet class is to finish the exercise and then go straight to the back because chances are there's someone coming here and they're going to come right behind you and you're going to crash into them. And even going straight to the side, again, maybe you have someone coming here and you're going to go straight to the side and you're going to crash into them. So please think I need to leave kind of front and then side. Never, ever, ever go backwards once you finish an exercise. So something that I think people don't really talk about but um, it's kind of worth thinking about is what you do while the teacher is marking the exercise and there are different trains of thought on this. Um, obviously if you're in quite a strict class then you will be expected to mark the exercise as the teacher is marking the exercise. However in an adult ballet class it's a little bit more relaxed. So for example for me if we're at the bar um, sometimes I will mark the exercise, especially if it's a more advanced class, but if it's um, a lower level class, obviously I'll be paying attention, I'll be looking at the teacher and I'll be thinking about the exercise, um, but I might, if it's before Adagio for example, be stretching at the bar, um, or just trying to make the most of my time at the bar, obviously I will never be talking and I'll always be paying attention, but uh, but depending on whether your class is very strict or a little bit more relaxed then you might be able to kind of make the most of the time and also do a little bit of stretching at the bar um, or practicing a specific move that's coming up in that exercise but the most important thing is that you're always listening to the teacher also please just consider when your teacher is marking something at the bar that you're not standing in a place that means that everybody behind you cannot see so just you know slightly move to the side you might need to come away from the bar um, just so that everybody can get a good view of the teacher. So just try and be considerate about where you're standing when the teacher is marking um, something at the bar. So then we get on to thinking about the centre. And when the teacher is marking something in the centre, obviously, again, you can mark the whole exercise with the teacher. Something that we got taught at the conservatoire, which they were very strict about, is that you must always do the arms full. So there's no marking the arms because I think people can maybe kind of get into bad habits with um, lowering the elbows and things like that. So they always told us we had to always do the arms full even when we were marking the lower body. So that's something that you might want to consider, especially if arms are maybe your weaker point. That's a really good way of not really tiring yourself out, you know, your whole body, but really making an effort to always do the arms full even when you're marking the lower body. So obviously in class, ideally, we're going to have understood every single exercise and know exactly what we're doing, but in reality, that's quite often not the case. So if you're in a class which the level is quite challenging for you, that's fine, it's always really good to challenge yourself. However, just be aware of the fact that if you're not sure of the exercise, if the exercise is going to be done in groups, then maybe consider putting yourself in the second group or the third group, depending on how many they are, which gives you an extra chance to watch the first group and to go through the exercise again in your head because the good thing about going in the second or the third group is obviously that it gives you another chance to see the exercise and to think about it but it also means that if you go wrong um, you're not going to get in the way of other people so do also think about if you're not really sure of an exercise maybe think about going more towards the back of the group especially if it's an exercise that travels quite a lot because then it just means that you're not going to get in the way of people who do know the exercise and who are going to be doing the exercise you know full out and who know it so just be a little bit aware of your own level and be a little bit conscious of your spacing and where you place yourself. And then of course when you're more familiar with the teacher and the kind of exercises they do and you're more confident then it's really good to go in the first group to kind of challenge your memory um, and also to go towards the front because it means that you get a really really good view of yourself in the mirror and you can correct yourself. But this is a process and you know some classes maybe you'll feel like going more towards the front and other classes you might prefer to stay nearer the back. Either way, because I've talked about before about the staggering, you, you should still be able to see yourself. 
Um, so I think it's just about being kind of self-aware and considerate of other people in the class. So something else that maybe some adult ballet dancers don't necessarily know because they just might not say it in adult ballet classes but anyone who's come from a kind of ballet school background or academy background will know that between bar exercises to change sides you always turn towards the bar. Now in an adult ballet class that's relaxed it really probably doesn't matter whether you turn away from the bar whether you turn towards the bar. Um, no one's going to say anything or get offended but if you would like to kind of do the correct ballet etiquette then whenever you are changing sides to do the other side in a bar exercise then you will always turn towards the bar. Don't get that confused though with during the bar exercise the teacher may very well put a detourne or something turning away from the bar so it's nothing to do with the actual exercise it's just in between exercises. So something else to be aware of when you're doing exercises in the centre is the direction that those exercises are travelling and maybe what will happen for example in Adagio maybe you're going to start with three developes which are not going to move anywhere. Maybe towards the end of the exercise you are going to start travelling in a diagonal line to start the second side. So just think about the whole exercise, not just the beginning of the exercise, and just think where do I need to start in the space to give myself enough room to do it. So for example if you're on the right hand side and you're going to be travelling to the right in the exercise, make sure that you give yourself enough space between you and the wall um, to be able to do the exercise properly. And of course some ballet teachers might tell you specifically start this side of the room or start further back or whatever depending on the exercise, but some might not. Some might um, just be used to having students who kind of know these things so that's just something else to bear in mind. So something else that I want to talk about, and this is kind of good etiquette, but even more than that, it's just good for your dancing. And it's something that I didn't always used to do, but I'm really trying to make myself do it. And that is to always finish the exercise. And this is especially true of corner exercises or ex exercises on the diagonal. Um, because for example, you're finishing with, for example, un pique under done, pique under done, and double pique under done. Um, and imagine that the last peaky on the done you kind of fall out of it or you don't make it all the way around and then you just kind of go. No. Try and always finish the exercise. Even if you've gone wrong, even if you've fallen over, get up and finish the exercise. It's just, first of all, it's good etiquette. It's kind of being respectful to the teacher and to the other people in your class. But it's also really good for you and for your dancing um, to kind of get yourself into the habit of always finishing the exercise properly, so whether that's in a releve or in a chasse and then a position, um, really try and be disciplined with that and to always finish the exercise. So the last thing is if the class usually applauds after the class, um, make sure that you're kind of part of that and, and are actually clapping towards the teacher and you don't just kind of turn your back and clap and walk off. Um, show your appreciation for the time and effort that they've put into the class. Something that I always try and do if it's a class I haven't been to before is also just after the class to go and say thank you, I really enjoyed the class. So it's just always really nice after a class to show your appreciation for the teacher and if there's a pianist as well and just to go and say thank you. So that's it guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. Um, let me know if you think I've missed anything because I'm sure I have, these are just the things that I could think of. Um, but please leave them in the comments down below if there's any other kind of ballet class etiquette that you think I've forgotten or I've missed. Um, and we can all share our ideas in the comments and kind of help each other to have a happy and productive ballet class because I know that these things might seem like quite a lot of things to remember but the more you go the easier it will get and, and the more natural these things will all seem. But just remember that as adult ballet dancers the main thing is that everybody can enjoy the class and so we can do as many things as we can to enjoy the class for ourselves but also just make sure that we're not getting in the way of other people or affecting them being able to enjoy the class as well. So thank you so much for watching this video guys and I will see you in my next one. Bye!